Hi, and welcome back to Stock Talk. So yeah, this show is designed for me to go through and analyze your stock picks. So uh, I gather up the requests that come through during the course of the week, and uh, we go through them on this show. So this is something I've been doing for the past 30 years for institutional investors. And what I like to do when I go through the analysis is give a lot of uh, really get into the nitty gritty on MACD and ADX and the moving averages and price structure and also looking at the individual bars. In today's lesson, I want to talk about candlesticks and a couple of key candlesticks, in my opinion, uh, that I like to look for in their relationship to the moving average. So if we go through um, the agenda for today. I want to talk about the candlesticks. Now you can look at the bars. You don't have to look at candles if you don't want. I just think it shows up a little bit better in the candle. So I'm going to use those today. Um, and I like to look at them in relationship to the moving averages. And so in other words, a specific bar might show up in a uh, and at one point, and it might not look very important to me. And then based on where it is in relation to the moving averages, it, it might take on a significant amount of importance. So I want to cover that and just go back and sort of take a step back. I've spent a lot of time talking about MACD and ADX, but we always want to start with price. Price is the most important thing. And then I like to use the moving averages in conjunction with price because I think it really helps with uh, price structure, uh, but it also helps in terms of telling us whether we're overbought or oversold. So uh, we're going to go through that and then uh, I'm going to go through your stock picks as I mentioned. Uh, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. I send out two to three reports each week. Uh, identifying individual stock ideas and uh, go through the market and also in the, in the sector action. Um, if you're interested in taking the service, uh, for people watching the show, I have a discount for now, which is uh, if you plug in the coupon code STOCKTALK, you can get the first two months for $50. So take a look at that. Um, I want to go ahead and get into this uh, lesson though. And I, I want to talk about these uh, individual candles. So I'm going to start on the left here and narrow range bars. And I just want to make sure you understand. So if if a stock is moving up and it, it's the bars are getting smaller and we end up getting what I would consider to be a narrow range bar, which is what would be the narrowest of the last seven if you compare it to the pri prior six bars and it's the smallest bar, then that would be considered a narrow range bar. And, uh, and I think that's pretty important just to keep an eye on because it's showing you that the momentum is slowing in that individual bar, that the momentum to the upside is probably starting to decrease. Now, that signal can mean one of two things. Sometimes it's the end or we were looking for a reversal in the move. And this can, same thing can happen on a pullback. So if we're pulling back and we start to see a small range bar uh, as after we've pulled back, then we might be looking for a reversal, especially if it shows up right at a moving average. Um, now there's another way to look at these narrow range bars and that's if we have a big bar to the upside and then we get a pause bar with a tiny range, then you'd be looking for continuation to the upside. And it really doesn't matter whether the color of the bar is red or green. If you get a narrow range like that after a good bar like that, then you're looking for continuation if you break out to the upside. So uh, those are a couple things that I look for in terms of narrow range. And then we've got topping patterns and bottoming patterns. So, uh, you know, this would represent a stock that opens up here. And let's just call this 50. We'll just say this is $50 at the open. And it pushes all the way up to $55 during the day. And then by the end of the day, it closes at, say, 51. So Overall, you know, you you were let's say you you opened at at 50 and closed at 51. If you just look at the close, you'd say, okay, that was a decent day. But in reality, this was not a great day. The sellers took advantage of this rally and sold it back. So that's something that would I would consider to be a topping tail. Now, the the midpoint of this bar is kind of important. I think you want for a topping tail pattern. I like to see it kind of close in the low third. And again, it doesn't really matter about the color, um, but it, I, I like to see the uh, upper end of the body in the uh, lower third if I'm considering it a real topping pattern. 
Um, now, this is a little different. It actually opens and closes at the exact same level. You go up and come all the way back down and the same. And this would be a daily bar. You go up and give it all the way back. This can happen on a daily chart. It can happen on a weekly chart. It can happen on a monthly chart. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, and then we have a different reversal where we move up and then and so we open up and just go up all day and we close at the high and then the following day we basically open right about the same level where we close the prior day and then are down the entire day. So if you slap these two bars together, you basically have this bar right here. And it's equally negative and some people actually think it's even more bearish, but I, I consider all of these topping patterns. And then we have the same thing on the bottom. So it's the same idea. It's just the reverse where buyers are taking advantage of a decline and taking over and uh, showing some strength by the close. And in this situation, it takes two days for that to happen. So if we look at that, now we want to start thinking about it in relation to the moving average. And I, I like to look at it in relation to the 18, but looking at it in relation to the 40 is also important to me. But usually... Um, I'm focusing on the 18MA and if you get extended away from the 18MA and we get this reversal pattern, the same thing that's happening here, this topping pattern where we make a big move up uh, and then we get a two bar reversal that's stretched away from the 18, that's telling me there's a pretty good chance we probably want to start working our way back down towards this 18MA or the opposite where we have a declining pattern and we, we're moving down and then all of a sudden we get a big bottoming tail. And that would, that would tell me that we're probably going to start working our way back to the upside. So I like to see them in relation to uh, the, the MA. So like if this bar showed up right here, it wouldn't matter as much to me. So if we got a big bottoming tail right near the MA, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider there's that much room. Um, so I, I, I like to look at it when it gets stretched away. Um, I also like to look at it if it's rallying too and this in a topping tail shows up. So we get right up against the moving average and let's say this is a topping tail right at the moving average. We've rallied up and then we come back down and we get that. That's also important. So this would be like a bottoming pattern here. Uh, after a decline and that's pretty bullish so we want to be on the lookout for that uh, let's go ahead and just I'm going to pull up end phase a weekly chart of end phase and hopefully this chart is big enough for you to see these things but again I want to pull up a few things so notice how this is oh, I'm going to start at the left and you notice how the stock is moving up and moving up and then we get the biggest bar in this whole move to the upside and it shows up here and we're kind of extended away to the upside. So while typically this big green bar would be a bullish thing, sometimes when you've made a big run to the upside and then you get a big green bar, that's actually an exhaustive sign and not a bad spot to consider taking profits. Uh, so if we're extended away from the moving average and we get a big green bar after a big run to the upside, yeah, that's a sign that we're probably getting a little exhausted in the near term. Uh, and then we see another situation where we move up and then we start to rally and then we get a topping tail a little bit of distance away after a nice run to the upside. That's telling us we probably ought to be looking for a pullback. And then we get a bottoming tail. Now, one other pattern I should mention is what I would consider they call it like a doji. Uh, where you open and close essentially at the same level. As long as there's a tail there, sometimes it doesn't open, it doesn't close in the in the upper third. It might close more in the middle, and it's a sign of indecision. And if that happens after a decline, then I'm starting to think reversal. But notice what happened here. We got this doji pattern, and then the following bar is a narrow range bar, a really tiny bar. So you want to be on the lookout for a reversal or move back to the upside, especially because we're sitting right at the moving average. Then we make a move up, and we start to show some strength, but then we get... A little bit of a, a doji develop here, tiny tail, and then we get a nice two back-to-back -back narrow range bars. That's telling us we're losing momentum. We're probably going to work our way back. So and then look at this big run to the upside, and then you get the biggest bar we have in this whole run shows up here. So that's this bar right here. And then we get two narrow range bars and then a big red bar to the downside. So you can almost argue big green and then big red because these were two pause bars. Then it tries to push up again and we get another tail. I mean, this is a lot of evidence on the weekly chart after a big run 
that this is probably running into some problems. Uh, you should be down on the smaller time frames looking for exits, or you should just be saying, you know what, I should probably be taking profits in this stock after a big run like this. It's a lot of evidence that there's signs of distribution going on. Then we go through a decline, and now look, here's the MA, the 18, and look at how far away we get, and then we get a bottoming tail. So that's kind of the start of a move there. Then uh, we get a move to the upside, and then we come back into this resistance zone and look at how it fails at 200 with a topping tail. So I think these are kind of important. Then we get some bottoming tails, smaller bars, and then an igniting bar, a big green bar kicking off the move to the upside. So these are the types of things I think I want you to start to be on the lookout for and use these in conjunction on the higher time frame to help you uh, identify where to maybe be a buyer on the lower time frame. So uh, that's how I want you to think about this. Let's go ahead and get into some individual stock patterns and do some analysis. Okay, so uh, I've got my four charts up, uh, monthly, weekly, daily, and in the upper left, another weekly with the relative strength. Uh, so uh, I like having this grid up, and I think I can see a lot of different things all at once. Um, one thing I want to mention about the bars and the relationship to the uh, MA, just to, to reiterate this, that it might seem really like a simple lesson, but the reality is, is a lot of the most simple things are really uh, very important. And if we look at this end phase on a monthly pulling back to a rising 18 and we get this bottoming tail. I mean, that's giving us a significant amount of evidence that we can use to our advantage over the course of the next month or two. We know that there's pretty good underlying support. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. So if we look at end phase, this is actually one of the first uh, requests. And uh, I, I wanted to uh, just uh, follow up here, make sure I uh, let you know what I'm thinking on it. Uh, so we've had a lot of strength. I mean, you can see this big green bar and that happened as it was breaking through 200 and through this prior high. So I view that as a pretty big bullish sign and more of like a continuation signal to the upside. And we've had some follow through from that. We're getting a little overbought. I mean, I, I actually think uh, the support is this prior high, this breakout level, which is around 225, 230, something like that. And, and we might be due for some kind of a pullback in the near term uh, after the run that it's had. But I would not be surprised to see this start. If we can get an orderly consolidation, I would not be surprised to see this start to uh, try and make a run up towards 300. Uh, let's look at ZIM. So this doesn't have a whole lot of history. Uh, so I'm going to focus in on the weekly and the daily. And I mean, one thing I can tell you is I look at the weekly chart. Um, we have pulled back. We have a rising 18 week and we're continuing to respect that. We made a... Um, a high and then we pulled back we made a higher high and then we got this topping pattern as I discussed it's more of a doji look but we got stretched away and we've pulled back now we pulled back for three weeks and then look at what happened again we get another semi sort of like a doji look to this bar as well and it's an inside bar so then we start to lift off from here so I think we're going to form some kind of a range between 50 and 60. I don't think this wants to break out right now. It just doesn't look, it looks like this sell-off was a little too harsh and we're going to have some problems up in the, uh, you know, probably in the upper 50s, something like that. So CPE, I uh, want to start with the monthly chart and just uh, point out this big break of this downtrend line that's developed here. Uh, so I think that's an important sign. I think that's, uh, you know, what we want to see uh, if a stock is turning around. And now we have a rising 18 month. Now, if we put this now, we know that the underlying there's underlying improvement on the longer term chart. But let's look at this uh, from a shorter term standpoint. We made this move to the downside and then without any kind of building of a new base or uh, mending time or anything like that. We just kind of turned on the dime and went straight up. Now we're trying to break out um, and, and we look overbought to me. I mean, we're kind of stretched away from the 18 week. Um, the momentum conditions on this time frame are very good. The weekly has good momentum in place. And I do think there's pretty solid support at 50. Um, but let's let's uh, analyze the bars a little bit. Notice how this tried to break out and then we got a pretty good sized red bar as it re-entered and then it tried to push up again and then we got another red bar uh, to show up. Uh, pretty good sized red bar. So if I look at like the, over the course of the last month, the two biggest bars are big red bars to the downside. So 
Um, you know, I just it just sort of tells me that there's some resistance up there, I think, and it's probably not quite ready to really follow through on this breakout right now. So I'd be looking for a little bit better entry closer into the mid to low 50s. SGRY, surgery partner. So uh, this is more of the classic pattern that I teach. Uh, and like to look for with two time frames. We got this nice strong move to the upside, and now we've pulled back um, and found support in the area of the 18 month line. Notice how strong both the MACD and the ADX are on the monthly. And then we go to the weekly. Now, the, the 18 has crossed down below the 40. So I consider this. Uh, this opposing trend pattern where the trend on this time frame is to the upside. And now we know we've kind of worked off the overbought condition because the trend on this time frame is actually going in the opposite direction. During the process of this decline, we did get overrun in the MACD. And the ADX, while it has low, it hasn't been low for that long. So I'm more inclined to be thinking that I want to wait for either this to strengthen here a little bit more and then pull back while the 18 cups around. That's one option. Or it might come down right now and then look for it to make a double bottom or a higher low and then turn back up from there. So those are the two ways that I think I'd want to play this. I don't know that I want to play it on this first initial move to the upside just based on everything that I've seen. MGA. So this is somewhat similar to me. Uh, although I think it is a little bit more developed. We have the same pattern on the monthly chart and notice how these big round numbers act as resistance sometimes. We get up to 100 and it pulls back uh, and now we're hitting 75 and finding support. Um, it, but it's a two time frame pattern where this is in an uptrend and this is now reversed and the 18 is below the 40. So we're going in, we're basically going in the opposite direction on the weekly chart. Um, because there's overrun on the MACD and because there's a little bit of selling to the downside, this is another stock that I do like the looks of, don't get me wrong, but I probably would want to be a little bit more patient and let this 18 cup around a little bit more and then maybe buy the next test of that. So um, if you want to play it off the daily, I mean, you could definitely do that. But I think just based on the way it's set up, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of trying to play these when they go down and then it's pretty much just straight up. Most of the time, I want to see some kind of a better base form, some kind of a tested low. And although we did make a slightly higher bottom here, it's just, I don't know. I just, based on this, I'd like to see the 18 week up around a little bit more. ADES. So this is a little different. Now, this has improvement on the monthly chart because it broke this downtrend line. And notice the big green bar. Look at this. So let's zero in on that. So now on a monthly chart, we get this monster green bar coming out of the sideways consolidation. That's very bullish. And that's a sign that there's a lot of support underneath. And notice what's happened since then. We've just gone sideways and we've pretty much stayed inside this bar since then. So that's been six months now. Um, but during the process of doing that, the 18 month is now rising. So uh, so from that standpoint, I'm, I'm kind of encouraged. What I what bothers me a little bit is that I think just looking at this, um, the first thing I see is we got this big red bar right here. I, we haven't been able to exceed that yet. You see the high of that bar? We failed at that a couple of times. So I don't really want to jump in ahead of that, number one. And then uh, when I look at this, I know I've got low ADX here and I've got improving ADX here, but then look at this big red bar. So the daily chart is showing, you know, look at this violent sell off to the downside. So I don't really want to do this until I can exceed this eight area, low eight area. So I like using the bars like that. Look for these big red and big green bars. They tell you a lot about what is going on. Um, and then you can use that in conjunction with the moving averages, the MACD and the ADX. Uh, 80, uh, AIG. So, um, we had this spike low on the monthly and it pretty much had a phenomenal recover, recovery. And now we're getting up into this range where there's a little bit more resistance. And then we can start to look at the bars. Just I want to isolate some of these things this, so to follow up on the lesson. So we know we're getting up into some resistance here and look at the reaction above 60. You see this big tail that forms. And now, it, just like we were talking about in the end phase on the weekly, we're probably going to work our way back down here. And we want to see if we get some kind of a bottoming tail or a narrow range 
or, or uh, doji or you know maybe it comes down and then we get a big green bar to the upside something like that that signifies you know the buyers are ready to step in again um, that's how I would look at these moving averages if I'm coming down towards those moving averages what I, that's what I'm looking for um, just generally speaking though it looks like we're losing a little momentum both the uh, MACD and ADX are making a lower high here. So I'm not in a big hurry on this now. Uh, and I, I would not be surprised if this actually doesn't hold the 18 week right now and maybe consolidates a little bit with resistance in the low 60s. So ETD, uh, let's look at this, another follow up to our lesson and make sure we see this so we get a strong move. The bars are nice and green. We don't have any red here. And then all of a sudden, look at what happens when we get back towards this resistance area. Now, I mean, look, that resistance is something we knew in advance, but we don't know how the stock's going to react to that. I mean, if we get nothing but green bars that close at the high, then I don't worry about this resistance. I'm going to stick with the price. But price is telling us as we start to approach tail, another tail, another tail, and this is happening on a monthly chart. So we have significantly uh, advanced notice, essentially, of what's taking place. Now we pull back and look at what's happening now. We get down into this area and we get a, a narrow range bar and look at these, uh, you know, I guess you have to call these dojis, indecision bars, whatever you want to call them, that we're, we've made a move to the downside, but it looks to me like the downside is running out of steam. So we have that and now we have this opposing trend, strong ADX, pullback, and now we have this opposing trend pattern with some overrun. So because there's overrun there, I don't want to necessarily play this just as it's coming up. However, we have low ADX in two time frames. So you could look for the breakout here. And I'd be willing to do that if this comes up through this area. Now in this situation, I want a big green bar breakout. I want to see green show some strength, preferably from green DI and some volume that it's coming out of this area and it really wants to break out and go. So I'm looking for a, a big green bar to kind of kick things off. Um, ARW, now this is pretty nice. It's strong up move. We have a rising ADX pattern, even through this consolidation of about five or six months. And uh, you can see how orderly this has been on the weekly chart. So we've been going sideways in price and the MACD has been working off the over, uh, overbought condition by coming back down towards zero. And look at how low the ADX is now. The ADX was pretty high as it was working up here and now it's way down at 10. So I think this is in a pretty good position. Um, when I look at the daily chart though, we, we tried to break out kind of from an overbought condition. So when I see that, I like to see a little bit better test and then cut back around and make some kind of a higher pivot low. So we come down here and make a pivot to the upside uh, to, and get back above, probably get back above this 125 area. Uh, but, you know, so I think we're going to come down below that. And then maybe when we come back through that would be where I would be looking as an entry now. Uh, let's look at LYFT. So uh, we've come back to the 18 month line and uh, we have this uh, downtrend line in place on the weekly. So there's really been nothing to do here since it topped out and started making lower highs and lower lows. We've just been sitting back and waiting for a trend line break. Just based on the overall pattern, I don't know that I would just consider buying the breakout of the trend line. I don't think that's enough for me. I think I'd want to see, you know, a, a test of the trend line and then a pivot to the upside, a higher low after the trend line break at this point. If we go sideways long enough, then I might consider the low ADX breakout to the upside, but we don't have low ADX on the daily chart. So uh, I'd be questioning whether I really want to buy that breakthrough 56. Um, so it's a stock to keep an eye on because if it does get going here, it could be interesting, but I think we're a little early. We want a little bit more evidence before we buy uh, some kind of kind of a pullback. Let's look at Boeing. So, uh, you know, it might be worth looking at the bars on this one too. I, I think, uh, you know, I do like the looks of the fact that this is breaking this downtrend line um, and the 18 month is turning around for the first time in quite a while. Um, 
what I'd like to see, we don't have any momentum yet, you know, on the weekly chart. It's pretty low and it w didn't show a lot of strength on this move to the upside. So if we had ADX that moved up here and then we had low ADX, then I think I'd be a lot more intrigued by this. So when I see that and I see the zero, uh, this zero line overrun, then I'm I, again, I'm, it's not like I'm not interested in this. I just want a little bit more evidence. We're getting a little bit of improvement on the daily chart, but I think what I want to see here is probably a breakout and then a pullback and evidence of holding this key area uh, around uh, 230. I, I don't know. I just I don't think I want to jump the gun on this just based on how it's played out. The fact that the momentum really isn't there yet. Um, and the f and really just the f uh, fact that uh, we have this MACD that's showing that there was a little bit more selling strength than maybe it looks like. Um, but a key area, not a lot of downside in this. So GM has made a nice move. I mean, we talked about this pullback and this turnaround right at 50. Um, it was coming back to this major support and we've got a nice move. We had a pinch play on the monthly chart uh, and good ADX pattern. Uh, we've got a lot of strength in the ADX on the daily chart. It's just overbought right now and you're coming up against the high on the weekly. So we have this look where it's almost like a V bottom almost. The entry was down in here, in my opinion. And now I think I would wait for some kind of a pullback or I would force it to break out and then buy the next pullback. One of the two. Um, I think it's more likely that it's just going to stall here. I don't think it's really going to break out and go from this juncture. Uh, it just looks a little too overbought to me. Um, Great Lakes, uh, Dredge and Dock. So, I mean, I, I really like the looks of this. This stock I have not seen. Uh, but we have a strong pattern to the upside. And then look at the pause. And, and, and I, again, I, I look at this, the bars all the time. I, don't, I might not talk about them that much, but look at what's going on. See the tail on almost every one of these uh, monthly bars? That's telling me a lot. There's a lot of support underneath. Every time this stock tries to drop down, you know, down into uh, around 13, 13 and a half, there's a lot of support underneath. And we have this sideways pattern in price while the uh, MACD and the ADX are working off the overbought condition. I think this is a prime candidate for a potential breakout, but it does look like it wants to hook first. If it can hook here and then break out, we we'll almost have a little uh, uh, clep and handle, which would be uh, very bullish uh, if it played out that way. So uh, good looking stock, really set up. Uh, let's see if we can get um, a little bit better entry right now because, again, it broke out, stretched away from the 18. Most of the time when you break out from an overbought condition, you will pull back and then go. Um, JKS, another solar stock, um, big move to the upside on the monthly, nice pullback here, good ADX condition. Um, but this is an incredibly volatile stock and we can see this on the weekly. Look at all the tails up here. So we know we've got pretty significant resistance at 75. I mean, see all those tails up there? And it probably is going to be a problem again when you get up there. Um, we also have some resistance here. You see these tails right here. So these are kind of key things I think you got to keep an eye on. No rush in here. Watch for a little pullback. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is listed and send those stock requests to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.